Here's our next presenter, Maria Ludicky. <laughs> this was me three years ago, about to go to one of the biggest nightclubs on the party island of Ibiza, Spain. I was slick with tanning oil, wearing an incredibly scandalous outfit, and I was clearly quite excited about the whole thing. What you don't see in this picture are the mysterious open wounds that were popping up all over my body. But I ignored them, making a mental note to buy Band-Aids. Within a few days, though, the wounds had grown to large, swollen, open sores, making it hard just to stand up or sit down. What all started as a small rug burn had developed into what I eventually learned was MRSA, a dangerous staph infection. But that was not the end of it. In the next year, I contracted E. coli and parasites. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, hypothyroidism. I had leaky gut syndrome and severe anemia. And after a year of antibiotics, I was still sick. Because the core problem was, I had no clue how to take care of myself. In fact, I think many of us don't know how to take care of ourselves. We're quick, to, we're quick to pick up a prescription, quick to ignore stomach aches and treat pain with another Aleve. But at some point, our body will make us listen. My life started looking more and more like this, and I knew something needed to change. So, step one, change my diet. In college, all I consumed was cottage cheese, Red Bull vodka, and whipped cream. I, re I really wish I was joking. And, not surprisingly, I was always exhausted. I went from being a committed three-sport athlete to feeling like I constantly had mono. So I compensated with several espressos a day. It helped that I had unlimited access at work. I very much had a Band-Aid mindset. If I was tired, I just needed more caffeine. I never questioned what was making me tired, and not once did a doctor suggest that my diet could be the cause of my health concerns. So, step two, build awareness. I started realizing just how hard it is to be healthy when our entire culture encourages something different. Every day we're exposed to 3,000 negative advertisements, and they're clearly influencing our lives more than we care to acknowledge. We've become one of the most addicted, stressed, and obese countries in the world. Today, being healthy seems like an uphill battle that requires extreme willpower or a whole lot of deprivation. We either don't have the time or money, and we resort to believing it's all about just going to the gym more. In fact, that's what fast food companies want us to think, that it's not about the food we eat, it's that we simply don't work out enough. I recently spoke at TEDxUIUC on a similar topic, and at one point I wanted to say not the nicest things about Coca-Cola, Mostly that it's an industry partially responsible for the deteriorating health of our country. <laughs> but Coca-Cola was a sponsor of TED, so I was not allowed to mention them at all in my speech. Clearly, these companies have a lot of power. So step three, change the status quo. Yes, marketing has immense power. From the advertisements and commercials to the packaging of every product, we're told what to buy. But it doesn't mean that we can't use those same tactics for good. Just imagine that instead of spending $117 billion on fast food every year, we spent that money on vegetables. How would that change our lives? Here's an example of just how well companies will advertise their products. They connect the product to experiences that evoke joy and excitement. They use bright colors and fun slogans. They give away prizes. And if nothing else works, get a hot chick. <laughs> so, now you're in the store. What product are you going to buy? They're both selling popcorn and are the same price. However, the yellow bag is at eye level, and you've seen advertisements for this product everywhere. It's not hard, right? Why would we ever buy that boring gray bag of popcorn, even if it was the healthier option? For the record, I love Boom Chicka Pop. <laughs> so let's make healthy food just as cool. Let's give lentils a chance to compete. <laughs> they can stand a little taller, look a little brighter, and maybe our children won't be as afraid of trying health food. We can break the stereotypes that healthy food is expensive, time-consuming, and nasty. And the best part is that when we market healthy food, we're not going to have to convince people that it's part of a complete breakfast. Our job is much easier. There are so many wonderful slogans about healthy food, they never all be able to fit on one box. And some companies are already rebranding their products. 
Bolt House Farms recently launched an extreme carrots campaign. <laughs> Making carrots seem as intense as fiery Doritos. <laughs> Students even said the carrots seemed to taste better than they remember. <laughs> so what can we do? We can shape media. We can filter which advertisements we decide to pay attention to. We can choose which companies we want to support. Yes, marketing has immense power, but as the consumer, we have more. We can be intentional about our health and our lives. We can be aware of just how much we're influenced and be prepared to make better choices. We can stop ignoring the warning signs our bodies tell us and become proactive in finding what makes us feel our best. And we can make stuff that matters. I'm on a mission to help design a healthier world. I believe that design shapes behavior. And by rebranding health, I can help people live healthier and happier lives. If it's cool to eat lettuce, if it's fun to buy broccoli, then choosing to be healthy will be much easier. I see a future where more advertisements look like this. <laughs> where celebrities endorse carrots more than they do soda. I think billboards could feature less fast food burgers and more local farmers. I think doctors might ask us about our lifestyles and not just blanket our symptoms. So yes, being healthy isn't easy, but it's possible. These photos were taken two years apart and I'm proud to say that I went from chugging Red Bull vodka to having a wedding bouquet made entirely out of vegetables. <laughs> now, this didn't happen overnight, but one of my favorite quotes is, the only person you need to be better than is the person you were yesterday. Thank you.